Now I've just seen something over there in front of me. Let's go and pick it up. Can you see it? Here it is. It's a lovely marble and it's probably a cod marble. A marble which came out of a cod bottle, possibly smashed by a child because they often used to smash them to get the marbles out to play with. It's quite rare to find them whole these days, they're usually smashed. I think we're going to have to do the obligatory marble in the sun shot. Right, where's the sun? Ah, oh, look at that! Isn't it lovely? Now just down here is a huge barnacle. Look at it, it's massive. I love these. And of course it's not native to the Thames. It's likely been brought in on a ship, on the hull of a ship, hundreds of years ago. The act of taking these barnacles off was called careening the ship. I've got quite a few of these. And then they often used to put copper sheathing on the hulls of the ships to protect them against barnacles and ship worm and ship rot and all that kind of thing and to ensure that the um, ship could sail a lot more effectively and not be damaged and also go a lot faster and not be hindered by things like barnacles. I've just seen something round down here. Now it could be a coin. Unless it's some kind of industrial thing. Here we are, look. Nope, that definitely looks like a coin to me. Let's have a look. I can't see a lot on there at the moment take it down and give it a rinse. It looks quite worn actually. Let's go and have a look. Now what is that? Probably an old one penny but I'll have a closer look at home. Definitely a coin though. Now, just down here, I've seen some stoneware. Look at this. It's got something on it there. I can't quite read it. Now, the question is, is it going to be in one piece? I mean, what are the chances? I can feel it going down here to the end. Oh my gosh, do you know what? It might be, it might be, it really might be, oh I don't know, oh my gosh, do you know what, it might be, Whoa. this is exciting, especially the fact that it's got a name on it there. Is that Stevens or something? Gosh, I don't know. I can't see. Right, guys, stick with me for the big reveal. It's been cushioned in this mud for years and years, and it's kept it safe. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, it does. It says Stevens. London. Oh, I hardly dare believe that it's going to be actually in one piece. What are we going to find? I can feel a neck. Yep, I can feel, I can feel a neck. I think we're going to be in luck, you know. Oh my goodness me. Ooh. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look, 
Oh my goodness, it's in one piece. Isn't that lovely? That is a beauty. Oh my. Look at that. Stunning, a stunning stoneware bottle with a, a pouring lip there. And now my hands are absolutely filthy. Where are my gloves? I know, I can hear you saying, why doesn't she wear gloves? Well, one of the reasons is because it's really um, not practical when I'm getting my camera out to have gloves on. And also the other reason is I like to feel the things between my fingers. Now, like really, I really like to touch them. But sometimes, sometimes gloves are a good thing for sure. Right, let's go and wash it. Wash that and my hands. Now, can you see what I've just seen over here? is part of a pipe but it's got a design on it which looks quite interesting unfortunately it's broken but I can see a little head there I think and some lettering looks like R I G H maybe right or something there's also a maker on the heel well, that's a little mystery, isn't it? I wonder if we can solve it. I do like a good puzzle, a good pipe puzzle. Right, now the tide's on the way in and I have just seen this <laughs> poking out of the mud. And so you know what I'm going to be doing right now, as carefully as I can, but as quickly as I can too, because the tide's on the way in. I'm going to be excavating it to see what it is. Right, I'll be back shortly. Wish me luck. Well, look, the bottle was broken, but never mind. I still had the excitement of uh, finding what I thought might be a whole bottle. So whew, I can relax now. I was getting really nervous that the tide was going to come in before I could get this whole bottle out. But anyway, what I have just pulled out of the mud is this implement here. Look at this. Now it's not a boat hook, but it's something ship related. Look at that. I'm going to give it a little rinse off down in the water. Right, let's go. Right, so check this out. The actual wooden part seems to be decorated, unless it's the knots in the wood, or maybe they're nails. Look. And then there's this fork at the end. See these um, little round things. They could be part of the natural wood I suppose. Well, I'm not quite sure what this is but I know people that will know. Definitely something maritime related. And maritime finds are really some of my favorite finds. Right, you're coming with me for further investigation. Or maybe some of you know what it is. Okay, I've got 
got something here. I don't know if it's pottery. It probably is. Look, there's some lettering there. Can you see it? Is it pottery? Or could it be metal? Do you know what? I think it could be metal. Can you see that? Some lettering. Ooh -hoo -hoo. I'm excited. I do love something with lettering on it. Wow. Just down there. I kind of want to just delay the, the surprise. Oh my gosh, it is metal. It's quite big too. Whatever's on it. Oh my gosh, everyone. I'm so excited. Oh wow. Look, it's a fairly big kind of um, label by the looks of it. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. This has made it all worthwhile coming down here tonight. Okay, it's coming out of the mud. Wow, whatever it is, it's fairly big. It's gonna have something on there that we are gonna be able to research. Should we turn it over? Ta-da! Oh, I love it, I love it, and I don't even know what it is yet. Oh my goodness me. Oh, and, 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 there's the imprint of history. Look, in the mud there. Oh my goodness, this is just, oh wow, I'm so excited. Right, we're gonna have to come back and take a photograph of that in a minute. Oh look, and there's a pipe stem there. Oh no, there's not. <laughs> it's a piece of grass. Oh my gosh, I'm re, oh my gosh. Look at this. What is it? Oh my goodness. Oh, look. Imperial Light, 1918, something or other. It's absolutely beautiful. Whatever it is. Oh my gosh, I just love this. <gasps> Class something charge, number 1438. What is this? Victoria. Imperial Light. Oh, wow. Imperial Light Limited, Victoria Street, London. Okay, well, I'll just look up Imperial Light, Victoria Street, London. £16. It almost sounds like some kind of... Um, I don't know why, tobacco is springing to mind. Anyway, look at that. Let's go and take a picture of it next to the imprint there. Oh, now we've got a boat coming. <laughs> so it will, uh, probably gonna wash over it. I've gotta, I've gotta be really quick. Be back in a minute. Luckily, I just took a photograph of that beautiful print before the wake came in. That's going to look so nice in a frame or something. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, everyone. I have spotted something good. I think. Look here. I'm going to try not to um, get the big shadow in the, the screen there. Um, look, I can see a clay pipe down here in the mud, but do you know what? I think there's a little figure of a person on there. Oh my gosh. Yes. Now on this clay pipe, there is a little something there. I think it's a person sitting down, look. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Can you see that? a little person sitting on the bowl of the pipe. Okay, let's wash it off. Get a closer look. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Okay, there's that side. It's all black because it's been in the mud for a while. And it will fade till it's all the same colour. And there is a little figure. 
could be a man, it could be a woman, I'm not sure. We will find out later. That is a very special find. Very, very special. Woohoo! Right, I'm going to show you something that I've just seen down here. I don't know if it's wooden, metal, new or old. <laughs> it's just there. Let me see if I can adjust my headlamp so you can see it better. It's not easy, is it, in this light? Or non-light, should we say? How can I do this? It looks like some kind of wood. It's got a rounded edge there. Sounds like it could be wood. Now, what is it? Ooh. What is it? It's like an oblong shape, see? How curious. What are you, curious piece of wood? Oh, why did I have to find something like this at night when it's... I think that is wood. I'm going to have to give it a little wash. Okay, here I am, I'm back. I've rinsed this thing off and I feel as if I have to take it because it's got these nice sort of copper nails around the edge and um, I don't know, I'm just curious. Look, it's got two little bits here as well. They look copper. And the other side is plain. But what is it? What is it? I can't leave it here, can I? It could be part of a ship. It could be something really important. And I'll tell you what, actually, if it dries out nicely, it might just make a really nice thing to hang on the wall. Luckily, I've got a big bag in my backpack. Okay, little thing, you're coming home with me. We'll have to work out what you are. Hi everyone, thank you very much for watching. And did I tell you I was excited? I mean, how can so much excitement be allowed in one video? And thank goodness for editing, because if there wasn't editing, there would have been even more. I'm so excited in that video. I was watching it back. You know, sometimes when you watch yourself back and you think, okay, okay, Nicola, I think you've got your point across. Ooh -hoo -hoo. I'm excited. Oh my gosh, everyone, I'm so excited. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Oh, I am excited. This is just, oh wow, I'm so excited. I am excited. There was a lot to get excited about in that video, so I can be forgiven. But even so, I did take a few of the I am so excited out. But anyway, here, right in front of me, there is a whole range of objects that are just so fantastic. I don't know where to start. But first of all, before I do start, I'd just like to say hello again. And I hope that you're all well, wherever you are and that you're all in good health and that you're happy and that your weekend or your week is going well. So where shall I start? Shall I start with the most excitement inducing object first? <laughs> Which one was that? The stoneware bottle, the pipe or the plaque? I think it may be the plaque. The plaque may be the winner of the excitement scale. So let's have a look. First of all, at this and I have given it a little polish up, a little sheen and I got home and I looked it up and guess what imperial lights do or guess what imperial light does. Based in Victoria Street, London, they made lights, they manufactured lights surprisingly enough and I suppose that's one of the reasons there's a great big sunflower right in the middle there. So I have found a few articles in newspapers dating back to 1909 and 1910. And most of the articles I found actually are Imperial Light telling people how good they are at lighting up one's country homes and how if you've got a country home, you really should be using Imperial Lights to light up your country home. So um, I don't know if you've got that problem, finding lighting for your country homes. 
But if you do, then imperial light certainly was the answer back in the day. So I've got a couple of articles and I will read a few key points from the second article. Adequate artificial lighting for their country homes is an all-important problem to owners. It is perfectly safe and should anyone accidentally leave a tap on in their bedroom, the gas has no power to asphyxiate. Very handy articles also are the acetylene candlesticks and night lights. For those who make a rule of reading in bed, the former will be found invaluable. So I'm not quite sure which light this would have been attached to, and it would have been attached to, to a light by the looks of it, because there's little holes there. But I would imagine something a little bit larger than a reading light. And I must go down to Victoria Street and uh, take it back to have a look to see, you know, where, where this would have come from originally. So there we have the Imperial Light plaque. And... Didn't I get excited about that? But you know, it doesn't take much to get me excited, you know. Give me an old copper alloy plaque and yeah, that's me. I'm done. I'm sorted. I'm going to mount it on something. And do you know what I'm going to mount it on? And I only uh, thought of this today when I was preparing the roundup for this video. I'm going to mount it on the piece of wood that I picked up, which is here. You see, it's kind of the same shape. And I have no idea what it is. Something electrical as well, I think. So do you know what this do you know what this is? There's these two sort of attachments here. Any ideas? Please let me know if you think you do know. But anyway, I think that this will look really nice mounted on there. Sort of modern art looking don't you think that's what i'm going to do i'm going to pop it on there and hang it on the wall i will um i'll show you in a future video what it actually comes out like when i do it right that's that and yeah please do let me know if you've got any ideas about this there's something very nice about it i do collect driftwood along with all the other things that i collect I love an artist called Margaret Mellis. Oh, she's dead now, but in the early 1900s or 1930s, 1940s, she used to make some beautiful driftwood assemblages, and I love them. And I think this is the kind of thing that she would have picked up and used as well. If you don't know of her, if you haven't heard of her, look her up, Margaret Mellis. She makes, or she rather, she did make lots of different kinds of art, but driftwood art um, which I absolutely love it really inspires me next on the excitement scale has to probably be this resplendent stoneware bottle isn't it lovely and I've managed to get all the mud out and on the front it said Stevens London and this would have held ink at one time and so Dr. Henry Stevens, who was a British physician, he was in 1829 carrying out experiments on inks and he was trying to perfect and patent indelible ink that would write in blue and dry in black. And indeed, by 1832, he had found this, he had sort of perfected this ink and he revolutionised office life and saved so much time for the people who used to have to mix up ink with powder. And also a few interesting points. And because it was indelible, the British government made it mandatory for ships, logs and legal documents to be signed using Stevens ink. And also in 1919, it was used to sign the Treaty of Versailles to formally bring to an end World War I in June 1919. So quite a lot of history associated with this beautiful stone ink bottle, which is absolutely perfect. It really does go to show how well the mud of the Thames can cushion and protect things and look after them so that they can just remain there in one piece until somebody comes along and finds them. 
So I'm very happy with this bottle. Thank you, River Thames. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is my coin. Now, some of you may have already realised what it was. I actually had no idea. So imagine my surprise when I cleaned it up and I found, let me get it the right way up, this. And it is, in fact, a William III 1697 silver half a crown. So that, I must admit, is the last thing that I was expecting to find when I popped it in my electrolysis bath. Now, King William III, he reigned from 1689 to 1702. So that is a really lovely, unexpected find. Oh, I forgot the, uh, the pipe, which should have come next in the excitement scale. Here it is. Now this pipe, isn't it absolutely lovely? You see, it's really turned a lovely whitish colour now. And there is indeed a little man leaning up against the pipe bowl and having a rest. But on one side, you can even see the tiny buttons on the jacket of this little man. And he's got a hat on. And he also has a little uh, tool there. What's it called again? A little pickaxe type uh, object. So um, he's some kind of worker having a little break. And again, it's just uh, another example of the ingenuity of these Victorian clay pipe makers. <laughs> they, they were just so full of ideas. And uh, yeah, it goes into my pipe collection as definitely one of my favourites. And talking of clay pipes, we've got this other one here. Um, I haven't managed to find out anything about it yet. There is a crown here, a Victorian crown here on the front. And there looks to be a face of a person here with some lettering. Looks like maybe right. If anybody wants to have a go at seeing if they can identify it and come up with what it might have said in its entirety, then that would be great. So there's a good challenge. Um, now I have here this pole. There we are, look, look at that. I've got it home, cleaned it up. Now the little round bits here, which I thought at first were some kind of decoration, they are knots, they are knots in the wood. And it is, thanks to my friend, Monica Butling Smith, she told me that it is actually a setting pole or a quant, which was used to push the boat in the direction you want it to go. You'd use the pronged bit here to push against the bottom of the riverbed, and that the prongs here would stop it from sort of going right down into the mud, or you'd use it to push against the wall to get your boat to go in the right direction. So that's a lovely piece of history and you can see here where they've sort of whittled it down to put it into the metal, the iron bit here. So that's really lovely and it, it must come from the 1800s, I should think. And apparently, apparently it's also linked, this kind of quant or setting pole um, is linked to the saying, I wouldn't touch him or I wouldn't touch it or her with a barge pole. It's funny how many um, sayings there are that are linked to nautical objects like copper bottoming, swinging the lead, um, knowing his ropes, somebody who knows their ropes. There are so many sayings that are linked to um, nautical objects. So as to what I'm going to do with this, I'm not quite sure. But you know, it, uh, it makes a very nice addition to my nautical collection. And like I said, some of those nautical objects, those maritime um, historical objects are some of the, the favorite things that I have. Lastly, right at the beginning, I found a, let me put this down somewhere so it doesn't fall over. 
I found a um, cod marble and I said I was going to show you a cod bottle. So here's the marble. And as I was saying, they're often broken by children who are trying to get the marble out. So the cod bottle was invented by Hiram Cod in 1872 and the marble would seal the top of the bottle. There we go, look. So that the liquid couldn't get out. So there's one that survived. Now I think that's it for the finds and what an amazing collection it was. Um, yeah, you just never know what you're going to find on the River Thames and I was particularly lucky with those outings. Now what I wanted to do is do the draw for the Searcher magazine which many of you entered about three weeks ago. So that is what I'm going to do now. So let's see who is going to win a copy of the Searcher um, which I'm going to sign and there will be three people who are going to win one. So let's go and have a look. Here I am on the comment picker site. And the first thing I need to do is put the link to the YouTube video here. So there it is. I'm going to filter duplicate users and filter comments based on a specific text, which is the searcher. Now, now we have to do a little sum. 10. Show random names. Yes, we want that. Get YouTube comments. Let's see how many comments there are on this video. Wow, loads. Brilliant. So now we can find the first winner. Are you ready? Start raffle and pick random winner. And the first person is Ricky Ginger and Minnie's Adventures. Hooray! Nicola, my hubby and I watch you and a few others weekly and just love your history. The cannonball was spectacular. Yes, it was. Thank you very much, Ricky Ginger. Right, the next person is going to be... How do I get another one? Oh, here we go. Pick another winner. Ocean Love and Gal. I liked the group of round washer-like objects you found. They would make great eyes in a craft project. I agree with you. Well done, Ocean Love and Gal. You have won a signed copy of the Searcher magazine. And now for the last winner. Pick another winner. Let's go up and take a look. Locke Davis. Nicola was so very nice seeing Grace, such a pretty young lady. Yes, she is. That she is. Congratulations on being in The Searcher. That's great. So we've got three winners. So I hope that you're watching. And I will also put a little note on my community page. Well done, everyone. And if you didn't win, don't worry, I'll be doing more giveaways soon. So well done, you winners. You'll soon be receiving a signed copy of The Searcher in the post if you provide me with your address via my Ko-fi site or you can also contact me via my website. So I look forward to hearing from you and I will be doing more giveaways in the very near future. So don't worry if you didn't get one this time. There's going to be other opportunities. So I think that's just about it for now. Um, I did want to mention before I leave that if you are tempted to try mudlarking on the River Thames, you do need to have a permit from the Port of London Authority. And at the moment, the PLA are not issuing any new permits. So that is, we are told, temporary. So we just need to wait to find out when that's going to change and when they're going to start reissuing permits. So I hope that you have a great week to come. I'd like to say thank you to you all for watching this video again and for putting up with all my shrieks of excitement and not turning off the video, although maybe some people did, I'm not sure, but never mind. Um, and also to say a huge thank you to everyone who has donated to my Ko-fi site and to Super Thanks, but mostly also I just want to say thank you for being you. Um, that is the most important thing. I appreciate each and every one of you 
So please do have a good week, stay safe, be happy, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye. scaffolders here at the moment they are mending the windows and look squirrel is exploring the scaffold squirrel the scaffolder hello what are you doing up there how are you going to get your nuts i can't put them on the scaffold da, 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 da. this is exciting isn't it oh no it means that you might be able to reach the bird nuts <laughs> <laughs> Did you put this scaffolding up, squirrel? Was this your doing? Come on, come down, come down off that scaffolding right now. Come on, there's a nut down here. This is very confusing for everybody involved. Come on, look, look, there's a nut. No, I can't put the nut up on the scaffold. You have to come down here.